We're all ready to go here on the Cardinal Report, your weekly 30-minute look inside the world of North Central College Athletics. I'm Justin Zipser. We're quickly approaching the end of the winter season. In fact, one notable sport has already wrapped up until the end of the year, basketball. We have guests from both the men's and women's teams lined up for you, and we'll bring them out in just a little bit. But before that, we take our usual stroll through the other athletic programs at the school and what they did over the past week or so. These teams are still grinding out the end of their respective seasons. Congratulations are in order to both the men's and women's indoor track and field teams, both rising to the top of the field for each team's respective CCIW championships at Illinois Wesleyan University. The women won for a consecutive year and third in the past four years. The Cardinals are currently ranked 18th in the nation and saw a big first place finish from Liz Composto in the pole vault. The junior cleared 12 feet and three and a half inches to become the program's 10th athlete to win an individual conference title in the same event three years in a row. Ebony Stallworth won the shot put with a throw of 44 feet and two and a half inches and also finished third place in the weight throw. For the second time this season, Madison Renfro broke the program record in the 60 meter hurdles with a time of 8.82 seconds. Each time she's broken the record, she's pushed teammate Jocelyn Redlinski to second on the list. Speaking of Redlinski, she broke the program record for points in a pentathlon. She finished just short of first place, however. On the men's side of things, North Central won an expected 14th straight conference title with a sizable push from its distance runners. Troy Keller finished first in the 5K, while Johnny Crane topped the 3K and anchored the distance medley team for its first place finish. Just business as usual for a team grabbing its 49th team title at the conference championship. Both teams can improve on their national championship qualifying scores this weekend at the aptly titled University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Final Qualifier. The national championships, by the way, are March 14th and 15th in Lincoln, Nebraska. We'll have our cameras there to keep track of the school's best athletes so you don't have to make the trip. The national championship squad for North Central Wrestling is set and it consists of Nick Santos at 125 pounds and Josh Tardy at 157. Both wrestlers finished in the top three in their respective weight brackets at the Midwest Regional at Wabash College. The Cardinals nearly added a third national qualifier in Leighton Binion, but the freshman finished one spot outside the top three in his weight class of 133 pounds. The freshman finishes the season with a terrific overall record of 35-8 and, and a CCIW championship. Just like track and field, Santos and Tardy gear up for the national championships on the 14th and 15th in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. As we mentioned earlier, basketball is all wrapped up in North Central for the season, and we're joined by both teams in this episode of the Cardinal Report. Stick with us through this quick timeout. Naperville News 17 is your hometown news source, and not just on television. Visit our website, nctv17.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter or like our Facebook page. And if you have a story you think we should cover, email us at newstips at nctv17.com. Naperville News 17, committed to building and celebrating community. The Cardinal Report is back. We have a packed show for you, so let's get things started right away. Joined first by men's basketball head coach Todd Redden. Coach, thanks for stopping by one final time this season. Thanks for having me, Justin. So you wrapped up the season against Elmhurst uh, a week and a half ago and uh, a really solid way to close out the season. You didn't make the conference tournament or anything. Uh, we, you know, we talked about that at length last time you were on the show, but fantastic way to, to, to wrap up the season on the road against Elmhurst and, and sending out your seniors in style. Well, it was. Uh, it was nice. You know, it, there wasn't a lot on the line for the game. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I think, uh, like I told our team, if, if you're a competitor, you'll compete in the game. And, and uh, even though it doesn't mean a whole lot to either team, uh, because neither team was getting in the conference mm -hmm. tournament. But, you know, I thought our kids really came out and played well. I mean, one of the better games we had, uh, we did a nice job of getting the ball inside. I thought Landon Gamble. What did he have, like 33? I thought he did a terrific job inside there. So, you know, I thought it was a, a well-rounded uh, game for everybody. I just thought we, they, they played well at, at both ends of the floor. That's a career high for, for Landon as well. We'll talk a little bit more about him as, as we go along here. But, you, you know, a couple of days removed from the season, you had a chance to look, look back at this and kind of look back on and see what you thought of this season? Uh, a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's just something that... Um, 
you know, we, we lost a couple kids from the year before, and, and uh, we just did not have the uh, uh, the kids that replaced them. And, and obviously, they were good players. And, and so, you know, when you have, uh, you know, it's a start with a new team, basically. And, and I think our expectations were extremely high, and they should have been. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, did we meet the expectations? Probably not. But at the same time, uh, you know, we just, we, we really had to try a few different things throughout the course of the year. Uh, to to try to get wins for us, and you know some of that was we slowed the game down because uh, we were only playing six, seven kids at that time, and you know the year before we were probably playing eight kids mm -hmm. and, and had a little more up tempo. But you know I thought defensively we weren't as good as we were the year before, and that's probably the biggest thing. And, and uh, uh, defensively, our team defense just was not as good as where it was uh, the previous year. And I mean, talking a little bit about the team defense and the fact that maybe you didn't think you were as good last year. I mean, you did have that depth last year, so you were kind of shuffling with lineups a little bit this season as uh, the season went on. Uh, was that difficult for you to kind of go game to game, not knowing what you'd get out of a lineup here, maybe change things up there, see what you get uh, from game to game? Well, it was difficult uh, mid-season because we were shuffling cards, yeah. so to speak. And uh, you know, it's just something that we're trying to get the right mix in there that that could help us win basketball games and you know we ended up uh, really we started two point guards uh, at the guard position and, and we you know Vince Kamick was out of position pretty much the whole year he had to play wing force uh, and uh, he, he played he was our starting off guard uh, the previous two seasons so we had to move him to a, a position he wasn't quite as familiar with and uh, so that hurt him a little bit probably hurt his game a little bit but at the same time I think from a team standpoint it, it uh, you know he he'd move to center if he if he knew we could win basketball games and that's the type of kid that Vince is but you know it's just something that uh, we needed to move some kids around in, in order to win and, and uh, you know I, I thought we played the last half of the conference season I thought we played pretty well yeah I mean you won four of your last five games so down the stretch well, maybe a little bit of the pressure was off you, but still down the stretch against you know tough uh, conference opponents, you still won four of your last five games. Let's talk about your seniors a little bit. Uh, four players have played their, their final game in Cardinal Red, Landon Gamble, Vince Kamick, we mentioned, uh, Pat Rourke, you talked a little bit about as well, and, and Brandon Williams, who was very, very good in that uh, Elmhurst game to close out the season. I know um, we talked a little bit about this before on the last time you were on the show a couple weeks ago, but... Um, Obviously, these seniors meant a lot to this team, especially Landon and Vince, and the fact that this is the winningest four-year stretch uh, in program history. You just finished up. Well, it, it is, and uh, you know they can be proud of that. They can pre uh, be proud of their accomplishments uh, for for North Central and, and mm -hmm. for our basketball program. Uh, you know they they were terrific kids off the floor as well. Uh, you know, it was something that, you know, it made coming to practice enjoyable the last, their last four years because, you know, you, you knew the talent from a talent standpoint, they had that and, and they all had the same goal in mind uh, as far as winning, you know, winning championships uh, and, and so forth. So, you know, it, it's something that uh, obviously they'll be missed, all, every one of them. I mean, you, know, you talked about Brandon, you know, he came on strong at the, the last half of the season. I mean, yeah. he was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, and Pat Rourke was steady throughout the whole, uh, the whole course of, uh, of his four-year career. Uh, then, he, you know, we talked about Vince and we talked about Landon. So uh, all of them are going to be extremely missed uh, by, by not only our basketball program, but the school in general. I mean, they, they're well-liked on the campus, and I thought they... You know, they're just somebody that represents North Central and the way we want our program run. Uh, and, and these kids really uh, held up their end of the bargain uh, and represented our program off the floor as well. well good, th good thoughts as always, Coach. Uh, your job is never done. You're off doing your recruiting thing. But uh, we appreciate you stopping by a couple times this season and talking basketball. All right. With us. Thank you, Justin. Don't go anywhere. We're taking a short break, but when we come back on the Cardinal Report, one of the most decorated players in North Central basketball history drops by to look back on his illustrious career. Yes, ready? Ready? Let's go get it. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet.
TCR is back, still talking men's basketball, but now with Landon Gamble, recently finishing off an awesome NCC career. And uh, Landon, first time on the show this year. A pleasure to have you on. We appreciate it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that Elmhurst game. 33 points, which, I mean, is pretty ridiculous considering you've played 112 games. That was your 112th game playing uh, at North Central, which is now a new record, like breaking Derek Reardon's record from a couple years ago. And you, up to that point, you never score that many points. So what was working for you? Was it just the, the, the thought of knowing that that was your last game out there? Yeah, I mean, that, that played a factor into it. I mean, obviously it was like my last game, so I wanted to make sure I go out, make sure giving everything I got. And the uh, crazy thing is, like, before this game happened, like, 33 points was my high freshman year. I had scored 30 points at Elmhurst and wasn't able to do it again until I played again at home Elmhurst my senior year. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's something I was able to do. So kind of a cyclical there. You got the beginning, you got the end, kind of a storybook there yeah. uh, finished for you. Uh, talking with uh, head coach Todd Rarin a couple minutes ago, and he told us that, you know, obviously a little bit of a disappointment this season. You kind of had to play with some new players, kind of get over the loss of, of Derek and Aaron Tickness from last season. What are your kind of general thoughts on how the season played out for you? Um, you know, the season obviously didn't go as we planned, but um, overall I think um, we were able to still stay together as a team, stay together as one and uh, rally, especially at the end of the season, even though we knew that, you know, we weren't going to make the postseason. We still stuck together as a team and pulled it on the end. And I think that's what matters most. I think that's a great point because, as we talked about with Coach, uh, you won four of your final five games. So, obviously, you, you finished out the season strong. What was uh, the difference between maybe the last five games or so of the season and maybe earlier parts of the season where you couldn't find that, that late push in, in some of the games? Uh, well, like at the beginning of the year, uh, as you know, this, we had pretty much a whole new team. We lost some of our scenes from last year. Mm -hmm. so. We're still in the process of trying to, everybody learning what their exact role was on the team, and that took some time to try and figure out. And as the year went on and progressed, we were able to be able to know that more and more. And at the end of the year, when we started rallying, that's, I feel like everybody pretty much knew what their role was and what to do and what was expected of them on the team. Well, it's good to see. I mean, the fact that you guys kind of gelled at the end of the season. The bad thing is now you and, and three other seniors are gone, so now the team next year is going to have to <laughs> kind of learn to, so, to work with each other without you, without, uh, without uh, Vince, two leading scores on the team so uh, what uh, what are your hopes for next season for this team uh, now that you're that you're kind of moving on here uh, my hopes for the season, t uh, team next year is to always the number one goal is to win a national championship uh, obviously this is a rebuilding year uh, we're lo losing a lot of people this season but uh, to be just basically coming together as a team and always stay together and get as far as we can as possible as Landon just talked about, North Central men's basketball finished off the season with a late push, but that doesn't mean there weren't highlights for the whole season. We had our cameras at each and every home contest at Gregory Arena this season, so let's take a look at our top three moments from 2013-14. The last day of 2013 provides fireworks for NCC against top-ranked UW Stevens Point. Pat Rourke throws up a prayer at the end of the first half, and it's answer. Cards only lose this game by two points to the pointers, proving they can hang with the big dogs. Skip ahead to the final game of the season. Landon Gamble ends his North Central career with the highest point total in his four years in Cardinal Red. 33 points from 11 field goals and 11 freebies at the line. The fourth all-time leading scorer in school history, also second in free throw attempts. The Cardinals scored their biggest win of the season on senior night. Although out of contention for the CCIW postseason tournament, Vince Kamik hits this shot with under a minute left to pull North Central away from the Thunder in a back-and-forth affair that sends the fans home happy. So leading uh, score of the season, 15 and a half points, and now with that final 33-point effort, you've passed uh, the 16-point career threshold, passing uh, Robert Brown, who was a 1990 graduate, CCIW Player of the Year from, you know, 20 four some odd years ago. So now you're fourth place, all time career list. Uh, how, how proud of yourself are you knowing that uh, you leave this program top five score all time? You know, it's a very big accomplishment for me. Uh, it feels good to know that I was able to come here and make such an impact on the school and on the program. And uh, just an honor to have to be able to say that I was able to do that and have all those accolades. And you were uh, all CCIW first team selection this season for the fourth straight year and just one of two players all time to do that. So kind of the, the accolades just kind of kind of build up over one, uh, one another over the, over the course of the year but uh, and career, I should say. But uh, you and Vince, I think, we'll talk about this relationship a little bit. You guys played each other in high school quite a bit, so you, <laughs> you knew each other sort of coming into your North Central career, kind of had to learn to play with one another. But uh, what, what uh, has playing with Vince 
you know, and you know, being his friend over the last four plus years because you played each other in high school. What has that meant to, to you personally and to this program? You think? Well, it mean it means a lot to me. Uh, with Vince, uh, it feels a lot. It's a lot better having him on my side at this time <laughs> versus when we're in high school and have to go against him. But uh, Vince is he's a really good guy, great guy. He's one of my good friends. Uh, I'm great. I'm glad. I'm great to uh, say that he's one of my friends. Um, He's somebody that I know I could go talk to whenever I need something or anything like that. But uh, in terms of being on the court, it was, once again, a great playing with him as well. I mean, whenever I was inside, I could, he was always somebody I knew I could kick the ball out to and knock down that open three. So it's like me and Vince has a relationship where, you know, on the court we're great friends, off the court we're great friends. Uh, it's definitely going to be one of my lifetime, one, lifetime friends as well. That's good to hear. And you guys were so awesome together on the court. Uh, one of the best scorers all time in North Central. Appreciate you stopping by, and, and congratulations on a fantastic career. Thank you. We're just halfway done here on the Cardinal Report. Next, we recap the women's side of things with head coach Michelle Roof. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Back here on the Cardinal Report, as promised, women's basketball head coach Michelle Roof sitting down with us. And Coach, uh, just like the men finishing up at Elmhurst uh, a little bit more than a week ago. And mm -hmm. overall, I know we, we've talked about this at length during the season, that a little disappointed with every, the way everything turned out. But if you consider the way two seasons ago, you only had one conference win. Slowly but surely, you're seeing progress in this program. You're at the front of it. Uh, give us kind of an idea from, from your point of view at the top, looking down, uh, uh, how the season went for you. Um, well, from a you know a wins and losses standpoint, it was obviously a little bit of a disappointment. We had set our sights um, and our goals a little higher than what we ended up achieving. Uh, I think there are some promising things that you know have have come to the surface in terms of different players you know stepping up for us. Our you know court leaders from last year didn't have quite as as good of a year this year. Um, but we've had some younger players and some other you know players in those classes really step up and elevate their level of play. Um, we don't graduate a lot, you know, we have a lot returning next year, including all, all of those players. So, so we're looking forward to the future, you know, and, and really like what we've seen in, in some specific players. I think that's a great answer, looking forward ahead to, to next season. Sure. Are you only losing one senior this year, Marion Beck, who we've talked about, had eight and eight points and rebounds in that game uh, against the Blue Jays to finish off her, her career. Yeah. And next year, looking at the senior class, it, it's pretty daunting. I mean, you have Laren Shoemaker, Kelsey Cooling, Lauren Hernandez, who may not play some of the games because of her ACL injury, but still a very good uh, leader on the sideline as well. Sure. Bobby Johns, Marissa Cladis, and you have the two transfer students, Uzuri Williams and uh, Tess Goddard. So you have a lot of <laughs> returning talent next year who will be there for their final year, and I'm assuming that they will want to finish off their careers in style and, and make sure that they leave a lasting impact on the program. Yeah, I think so. And and throughout this year, I mean, every single one of those players has led us at times in just about every category. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a couple injuries here and there. So other players had to really step up. Lauren Hernandez, you know, took over the point guard spot at one point and then went down with a knee injury. Um, she actually already had surgeries doing real well. So we're thinking that she's probably going to be healthy, you know, Knock on wood at the beginning. I don't know of if that's it. real wood. <laughs> that's all right. I hope it is. <laughs> um, but, you know, so we're hoping that she'll be back and ready to go. And uh, the rest of them that you mentioned, I mean, they can all score. They can all rebound. They can all do a lot of things. So so we're, we're really excited about that. So a lot of highlights this season. Uh, you go back to the early parts of the season. You had that, that game against Rippon, 113-111 uh, overtime thriller. Deja Moore had mm -hmm. the game to the buck at the end of regulation. Take it to overtime. Yep. In overtime. She wins it with that last bucket. So you had a lot of early uh, success this season, a lot of highlights. And I think that's the parts that you have to kind of to look after and, and make sure that you take over the next season to give people some confidence. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the story all year. You know, we had, a, we had some, some really big highs. You know, we had a lot of peaks. But then, you know, we also had a lot of valleys. We, we experienced, you know, some ups and downs, some games where we came out, played real well, and, and beat good teams. And then we had some teams that we, you know, we just didn't perform real well and uh, didn't go our way. So, so you're always, you know, a little disappointed about those. Um, I would like to have seen a little bit more consistency out of us, 
but you know, ending the year knocking off Illinois Wesleyan, which is probably mm -hmm. one of the you know one of the biggest wins that that we've experienced in my time here. Um, you know, when we're on and when we're playing playing well, we're we're a pretty tough team to beat. We've just got to maintain that consistency, that level of play, you know, throughout a whole season. And I'm hoping that with our big senior class next year, you know, they'll come in, you know, focused, ready to go, a little more, more driven and, and motivated to really get the results. And something that when we had you guys on last time, Uzuri Williams, who was on with us, yes. she, she mentioned the fact that pregame, she can kind of tell if, if the team is, is on or off you know, before even the opening tip. Yeah. Is that something that you can sense as well? It is. It's something that uh, is a coaching staff, you know, we could really kind of see, you know, before the start of each game during warm-ups, you know, how focused we were, how, how loose we were, how, mm -hmm. you know, intense we were, you know, and, and when we didn't warm up well, when we just, there were just games that we just looked like we, we weren't ready to play. I mean, it's, it's tough to talk about, but, um, you know, and, and hopefully we've, you know, figured some of those things out. We worked on some strategies with the team a little bit towards the end of the year. Um, and, it, and it got a lot better, uh, you know, the last six or seven games in terms of coming out with intensity. But, uh, but that's definitely something we need to improve upon for next year. And it is a pretty easy fix, you know, in terms of just coming to the game mentally ready, ready to get after it right from the start. Absolutely. And you still have the, the conference in scoring 93 points a game. That's another high point. Marissa Cladis, who, as we mentioned, will, will be back next year, led the team in scoring five of the team's last seven games. So you have a lot mm -hmm. of returning talent. We're hoping for better things. I'm sure you are, too. Thanks for uh, stopping by all season long, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for covering us all season long. Absolutely. We've really appreciated it and, uh, and definitely look forward to next year. It's head coach Michelle Roof. We still have more Cardinal Report coming your way next. She may have just finished up only her sophomore season, but Kim Wilson has quickly become one of the leading voices on the NCC women's basketball team. We hear from a player's perspective on the season next. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. North Central women's basketball junior to be Kim Wilson sitting down with us. Kim, thanks for stopping by. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so let's talk about the season a little bit. Uh, you averaged around uh, seven points per game, um, led the team in three-pointers made with, with 49. Marissa was, was just behind you with 48, but mm -hmm. uh, you just eked her out in that, in that regard. So you're one of the main contributors on the team, and mm -hmm. when we talked with Coach about being a little bit more consistent. So mm -hmm. you still have a couple more years here with the program. What do you think the key is to, to becoming more consistent when you're when you're on the hardwood? Definitely, um, as Coach talked about in warmups, I think being more consistent in warmups and in practice too, because how you practice and how you warm up is how you're going to play. So I think if we come out with intensity every game and every practice, ready to go, then we'll play more consistently. Now I went to a couple of your practices during the year. It definitely mm -hmm. seemed like it was very high energy, as mm -hmm. you know the the system will kind of force you guys to mm -hmm. be like that. So it's kind of odd to me that you would come out with. I don't know, lack of energy, maybe the right phrase, mm -hmm. because that system forces mm -hmm. you to kind of be so energetic and so uh, so based on, on movement. So uh, that was kind of one thing that, that I thought mm -hmm. was a little bit odd. But you know, going back to the way you guys mm -hmm. finished the season, it, it finished on a two-game losing streak, but really mm -hmm. we saw contributors all throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, and as we talked with Coach, the fact that there's going to be so many contributors coming back yeah. next year for, for seniors, senior year. So uh, what's that like kind of – kind of different from this year where Marion mm -hmm. was the only senior on the team. Yeah, definitely. Next year is going to be a big year. You know, we're not losing very much except for Marion. She was mm -hmm. one of our main fives. And hopefully we'll gain some more freshmen. And I think next year we're just going to come out even stronger. Especially this year, we had a ton of freshmen coming in. And, you know, as a freshman, it's hard to come in. You're inexperienced. You've never played at the collegiate level before. Mm -hmm. But I think the freshmen did really well this year. And now that they already have one year under their belt, on top of all, like, the seniors that we have, I think next year is going to be a really good year for us. So. I think that's a great point. We saw a great uh, contributions from uh, first-year players, using Williams, who was mm -hmm. a transfer student, but the freshman, like you said, Sophia mm -hmm. Svensson, who came in, really yeah. was a good rebounding threat. Mm -hmm. Dejan Moore, her early in the season, really mm -hmm. picked up a lot of the scoring load from yeah. the point guard spot. And I think what makes it even more difficult is is the difference in the system. When you mm -hmm. get back and you're you're playing yeah. with North Central for the first mm -hmm. time, and then there's a different system just the way you're playing. Mm -hmm. So explain that when you came. To to mm -hmm. the to the team last year, mm -hmm. how long did it take for you to to kind of get acclimated to what you were doing? Um, 
I think it took me and the rest of the team a while because it was our first year running it my mm-hmm. freshman year. Sure. So, um, but I think we actually picked up well on it. I think the um, first like month or so was a little rough because we were obviously still like patching things up. But you could definitely tell that from the point like when we started conference to the end, we definitely progressed. Like I feel like um, the end of our conference like play was really well, and our we mastered the system, as Coach Porter said. Um, so I think it was kind of harder for the freshmen to come in this year because we'd already had one year of it under our belt. But I think that, so I think it took them a little bit longer, but I think that after they got it, they definitely picked it up and we progressed. So hopefully next year will be even better. Just like the men's team, we had our cameras at each and every home game for the women's team as well. In a season full of record setting offense, we present our top three moments of the season. North Central is always running a full court press and oftentimes you get sequences like this one against Milliken. First it's Emily Zagoda lofting the ball up for the bucket. Big Blue has trouble finding someone to inbound to and Laren Shoemaker takes advantage with the steal. And the layup from Kim Wilson provides four North Central points in the blink of an eye. In November, North Central opens the season with tons of momentum, mostly from this game right here against Lake Forest College. NCC scorches the Nets all evening long, along the way to a point total of 123. That's a new program record, and one that North Central nearly equals in Bloomington against Illinois Wesleyan in February. North Central's first game of the season is a couple of nights before against Ripon College. In a high-scoring contest, Deja Moore ties the game with two and a half seconds left in regulation. And then in overtime, wins the game for the Cards with another last-second bucket. Not a bad way to kick off your career. So when you came in as a freshman, uh, your, the team was coming off a one-win conference mm-hmm. season. And here you are a couple years later, obviously a lot more success. So mm-hmm. I think uh, the way this system has worked out, it definitely has led to more mm-hmm. success on the court. Yes, definitely. I think a lot of people kind of doubted the system when they first heard about it because no one had ever ran it before. But um, after putting all of our confidence, in t- confidence into it and just like giving our all, I think we see like the benefits of it and that it has helped us progress as a team. So I think some people can see it as a novelty, but I think the mm-hmm. way you guys play, you have so much fun with it. Mm-hmm. You obviously do enjoy uh, you know running the system. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun for you guys on the court. It's fun, but it also produces results as well. Yes, definitely. It's fun to watch, it's fun to play, and it's also really good because everyone gets to play too and everyone contributes. So it's not necessarily like one person's having a really good game. Like usually three or four people are having a really good game at one time. So it really makes for better team bonding, I think, as well. And I think it just like adds to the whole freshman play too because a lot of other freshmen in our conference aren't used to playing as much as the freshmen on our team. So I think our freshmen have that upper hand. So. So there's a lot to look forward to for mm-hmm. next season. Uh, obviously, you guys didn't, want to get, didn't get where you wanted to go this yeah. year, but a lot of experience come mm-hmm. back, a lot of talent, and uh, hopefully some better results. Thanks for yes. stopping by, Kim. Definitely. No problem. Thank you for having me. That's our show, but as always, check us out for a new episode next week. Our most recent episodes of the Cardinal Report are also available on demand on our website, nctv17.com. I'm Justin Zipser. Thanks for watching.